Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Anchor. Thanks for that applause. That was great. We're so excited to have you joining us, whether you're in person or you're watching online. This episode is being sponsored by Carry Your Cross, an apparel company that has its focus on inspiring men and women to carry their crosses in life. Learn more and purchase your apparel today at CarryYourCross.com. We're going to be back in just a moment with our guest, John Root. And welcome back. We're so excited for this episode with all of you. Again, thank you so much for taking time to watch today's episode of Anchor. Today, I'm joined with John Root. John, thanks for being here. Thanks so much for having me. This crowd is amazing. I know for they real. said they'd bring the heat. They it's do. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. And thank you for taking time to fly out here. You're coming in from Arizona. Yep. Um, and we got a chance to meet this summer at a Turning Point USA event. So mm -hmm. I'm really grateful that you took the time. But for those that don't know you here watching in studio and at home, can you introduce yourself? Well, I'm John Root, like you've said, oh, yes. uh, sports and uh, <laughs> political and cultural commentator. I feel like there's so much going on in culture and politics and sports. Everything's intertwined and even the faith aspect of everything. Yeah. It's just, there's so many elements inside different aspects of culture. And luckily with Turning Point USA, I've been able to cover those things awesome. because I know it's something we might talk about, but I started to work in sports because I wanted to get away from politics. I wanted to get away from the craziness of life and just focus on an outlet that got us away from those things. Yeah. But that's not really the case anymore. So I, I worked in sports for a long time. I was born in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, definitely don't really align with a place like that politically or okay. even faith-wise. Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes God puts us in places for a specific reason. Mm -hmm. Not saying that San Francisco Bay Area is Nineveh <laughs> and that I was Jonah. <laughs> sure. But it's definitely one of those situations where I was blessed to be there. I worked for one of my favorite sports teams. Mm -hmm. But it got to a point, you know, once the pandemic hit, I you saw, you know, politics flooding into sports. And mm -hmm. then something I wanted to focus on potentially my entire career, that, that was it. And then got connected with Turning Point USA and I was able to say things and not get canceled awesome. <laughs> and not be afraid to say things because I might you know, lose a job or something. So it's been a crazy whirlwind of the last few years, just like many people have had, but yeah. I love it. Awesome, I'm so yeah. glad. And even too, I know that you played sports all the way through college. Mm -hmm. Was your faith always intertwined when you were playing sports and you were out there on the field? Yeah, and luckily I grew up in a home where my parents definitely taught me the right foundation. Okay. You know, it wasn't about me because sports a lot of times too, you'll watch sports now and it's all about, you know, what, what is this person wearing? How can I make it about me? How much money do I have? What car do I drive? Yeah. But I knew, for, but also too, I, I knew for me, I could have the ability to play college sports, but I was never going to play pro sports. I think uh, I couldn't jump high enough. I couldn't run fast <laughs> enough. <laughs> hey, neither but, can I. But I, I loved it. It was such a great opportunity to play at Azusa Pacific, played football there. So if anybody knows about Kansas City Chiefs legend, running back Christian Okoye, mm -hmm. he played at Azusa Pacific. Mm -hmm. We moved to D2 when I was uh, going to school there and, and playing football. It was a massive blessing, even when I, I got hurt. And I think God was telling me, maybe stop playing tight end. Maybe you should just kick the football. <laughs> and I knew from there uh, that it was going to be an awesome opportunity to you know, grow in my love for the game and then eventually work in the media side of things. That's great. And what has your experience been so far? You know, working with Turning Point USA, the experience that you've had maybe beforehand of talking to all of these athletes, you know, whatever sports arena they may be in or have been in. What are their experiences of mixing faith and sports together? Yeah, because there's definitely, it's, it's, we know we're countercultural. Mm -hmm. We know that 100%. And then even now, too, we're touching on the, the political aspect of things. Right. There's certain things within our faith that don't fit the mainstream mold. They, they never have. Yeah. So when you got, um, if you don't mind me just getting a tiny bit political here, but when you got like Black Lives Matter that are being, promoted mm -hmm. uh, you got uh, you know pride nights you got things that just don't align with your faith mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that we don't love these people but love's sure. been redefined truth has been redefined and a lot of these athletes they're trying to decipher what do I bring up and when do I bring it up mm -hmm. because not every single athlete is a Tom Brady out there yeah. you can't go out and say something or have a hat in your locker and just have the media ask you a few questions and then your job's safe yeah there's a lot of people now where they're just like, I don't know about these medical decisions that I need to make. I don't know about this political uh, aspect of things here. Uh, 
because they speak up about stuff, mm -hmm. they're done. And right. they've worked their entire lives to get up to this level. And then even people on the media side. Exactly. A lot of the media now has a specific narrative they want to push. Uh, we've even seen that um, in every single sports league. We've seen it in the World Cup. We saw it in the Olympics. You see it absolutely everywhere. Mm -hmm. But there is some great athletes that are very strong and bold in their faith. They're unashamed and they're unafraid Good. to talk about the truth because that's what we need right now. We mm -hmm. don't need any more wishy-washy stuff. We need people to tell us, like, here's the truth about you know, biblical justice compared to social justice. Here's the mm -hmm. truth about um, actual biological sex. Here's the truth about this stuff. And sure, right. people are going to call them names, but there's a lot of athletes that I've spoken to um, that have spoken out. But mm -hmm. there's other athletes that are having a lot of very, very important conversations within the locker room or with their family or friends or anybody. That's good. And even too, like you were saying, like there is a risk involved when you want to speak the truth. You know, that could be for you at home watching or here in the studio. Uh, wherever you are, like workspace, sports space, there's a there's a risk of you don't mm -hmm. know how what you're going to say is going to be received. And especially like you've been talking about, sports almost seems to have changed over the past couple of years. Um, and, you know, maybe these, like you were saying, you know, the political aspect and everything mm -hmm. and social aspect has changed. But what has remained the same? Maybe pre-COVID, pre some of these political issues, are these games still holding true to what it may have looked like before maybe politics and social media found their way in? What are sports all about? Meritocracy. Mm. That's it. So I think there is aspects of sports where it, it doesn't matter what your political affiliation is, what your uh, socioeconomic background is, are you the best? Mm -hmm. Whether the player, coach, uh, media member, I think is a, it's a little bit different, sure. but there still is aspects of meritocracy within getting that job on the media side of things. Mm -hmm. So with sports, what's the thing that's brought us together better than anything else? Like as a world, the Olympics, mm. or at least it used to be. Yeah. Or there was aspects of American sports where we're just like, I want this team to win or I want this team to lose. That's it. And then who got the jobs, the best people for the job. So I think there is an aspect of that when we watch the, the World Cup, we watch the Olympics, we watch the NFL, the NBA, mm -hmm. uh, the MLB. It's all about like, is that the best person for the job? Right. And it, it doesn't matter outside of that. Like, can you hit the ball? Can you throw the ball? Can you yeah. catch the ball? Can you kick the ball? That's it. Mm -hmm. And I think there is aspects where we start to focus on those things. And a lot of leagues, I think, are really noticing that if you start getting into this political stuff, you are uh, elevating one side and then you're suppressing yeah. or oppressing. I don't like that. I don't really like the word oppression, mm -hmm. but that's kind of what you're doing to your fan base. So I think sure. the NFL has noticed like we can't dive into these things. The MLB has noticed like we we can't do this because our fan base doesn't enjoy it. Yeah. And I think a lot of the players and, and media are realizing that just doesn't stick. Mm -hmm. uh, ESPN, they don't need to be MSESPN. <laughs> like, we don't need another political news outlet. We yeah. want to watch sports. We want to see highlights. Mm -hmm. And we want to get away from it because everything feels so heavy right now. Yes. That's what's mm -hmm. going on in our entire life. And what do we do to get away from that? Sports has usually been that place. So I think sports is really stuck to meritocracy. Mm -hmm. And I think there's <laughs> – It's. I was uh, talking about it um, a few weeks ago. It was like – I don't care to see a white cornerback in the NFL. It's all about, are you the best person for the job? We haven't seen a white cornerback until this last season. Okay. Like it, it was like two decades before we saw one. I was like, I don't care. Mm -hmm. The best person for the job, it doesn't matter what you look like, where you come from. Mm -hmm. Can you make sure that you're making sure that those wide receivers don't catch passes? True. <laughs> that, yeah. that, that's, all, that's all we care about. It's a meritocracy. They've done a good job sticking to that. That's good. And what about, John, you know, um, our conversation, I would love to throw a little bit of faith in there. I know you're a man mm -hmm. of faith, um, you know, a follower of Christ. For us, like when we look back at Genesis and we see God creating the universe, he takes the seventh day, the Sabbath day to rest. And so oftentimes have we seen sports take that day for us, you know, whether you have grandchildren, children, and you know, all day long, like beginning to end, you're traveling for your sports games, and you know, I hear so many times, oh, we don't have time for the church thing on Sundays anymore, or oh, we just have such a big, busy schedule, you know, we're running around in the morning. What can we do to really keep our focus on Sunday is for God, um, where you know, sports and faith can coincide together, but sometimes the sports takes the precedence over the faith. 
what can we do to maybe balance that again so it's in the right order of gods and sports? Well, first off, I feel like you're really convicting me right now. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> but no, no more I, football on Sundays. I, I, love, I love, especially NFL Sundays. Mm -hmm. it, it's one of those things. Like, Luckily, I got a great support group. I get a good uh, Bible study and accountability group. Uh, I got a great girlfriend. Right now, it's kind of like... I need a reminder at times. Like I, I love the Lord. I love going. I love going to church. I love diving into the Word. And I love making the Sabbath day holy. But mm -hmm. there's definitely times where I'm just like, "How's my fantasy team doing?" Um, yeah. Sorry if I'm bringing up sports betting, but I'm not <laughs> betting a lot. <laughs> but uh, just those kind of things. I just get caught up in like my team's playing here. This game's going here. But how can we not spend time with the Lord? Like our Lord and Savior died for us. Yeah. So like when we're taking communion, it's like this person sacrificed their life for me. Mm -hmm. The least I can do is sacrifice one day out of the week to make sure that I'm really giving reverence right. uh, to the Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. and so and then also, too, I think people have an interesting view of the Sabbath. That doesn't mean that you just sit here and that you're praying for 24 hours. True. Like, so I think there's people, they, they need to flip their, their thinking that like, Every single day should be about the Lord, yep. but there needs to be times where we take rest. Mm -hmm. And who do we look to when we talk about we're, we're so exhausted or we're uh, caught up in a zillion different things, especially on Sundays. And someone like me that's just involved in sports all the time. Who took a rest? Jesus. Mm -hmm. he, took, he took some time of solitude in prayer, talking to his father. Mm -hmm. So if we look to anybody, he is the best example for that. And it's convicting for me because I know there's plenty of times where I'm like, all right, there's 24 hours in the day. I'm going to sleep for about seven of them and the rest of them I'm doing something the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> and I think making sure we keep the Sabbath day holy, we can hang out with our buddies, we can mm -hmm. fellowship uh, with the Lord while we're cheering on mm -hmm. our teams True. and making sure we're not cussing at the TV. There you important. go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Agreed. No, that's great. And, John, you know, speaking of rest, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to throw to a commercial, but stay with us because we're going to hear from a couple of our audience members asking John some questions to continue this conversation. We'll be back in just a moment. And thank you all again for being here with us on this episode. And John, thank you for being with us as well. At this point, we're going to move into a little bit of Q&A from our audience. So I do know that we have two people who have a question specifically for you. So we're going to start with Brian Daly. Brian, ask your question. So, excuse me. So John, you talked a little bit about like the importance of the Sabbath and about how it's, it's kind of like as Christians, like the central day of our lives that we dedicate ourselves to God. And, uh, but there's a liturgical element to sports too that we can't really deny, I think. And I guess well, we, while we don't want to turn sports into a religion, obviously, like, do you think that there's a place, like an overlap between sports and religion? And uh, if so, what do you think that is? Yeah, because I think I was touching on that a little bit, this aspect of we think a Sabbath is just like the rest. And I think... Obviously, when Jesus is speaking to the religious leaders of the day in the New Testament, it's just like, all right, I came to fulfill the law here. So like he, we have the new covenant here. So it doesn't mean that you guys just sit back and then just do nothing. I think sports is a great way to glorify God. Because, I mean, just look at all the people we watch every single Sunday. So if we're going to focus just on Sunday here, some of these athletes do a great job glorifying the Lord. Like whether they catch a big pass over the middle they throw a big touchdown pass. They're just pointing up to the Lord. Like it's a great way to make sure that they can utilize the gifts that God's provided them. And then even people that are going to the game in person or you're watching it at home, it's a great way to fellowship together. And what a blessing that is to have the community, to watch that. And obviously, you don't want to make an idol out of it. There's plenty of us, like, I'll just say me. <laughs> like, I'll be watching the game on my phone or just keeping up with, with so much. And it's like, all right, well, maybe I need to take a step back and thank thank God for the day, repent uh, for my sins that day, and then still at the same time really understand that God's blessed us with sports. He's blessed us with some athletes that can glorify God really well, but I think that aspect, 100%, like, I love watching sports, and I loved playing sports, and I think it's a great way to glorify God, so everything we do should be glorifying God, and even if our team doesn't do well or our fantasy team doesn't do well, we can't get mad at God for that. <laughs> so it's a great day. Yeah. Great question, Brian. Yeah. And our other question is from Helen Donovan. So Helen, please go right ahead. 
Hi, thank you, John and Monet. Um, my question is, do you feel as though we're making some progress in having important conversations and programming like this, and we're waking the sleeping giant and maybe really sharing the faith and the truth more? Do, do you see that we're making progress? Yeah, I think people are empowered 100%. And I think for me, there's definitely, there was a fear of man 100%. Like, I, I'm not gonna deny that. When I was working up in sports media, I knew that I couldn't like specific tweets, I can talk about certain things because my next step was working on a network. Mm -hmm. That was the goal. I remember watching ESPN Dream Job. It was all about people competing for one anchor spot on SportsCenter. I wanted that. But I knew that I could talk about my faith a little bit, but these aspects of culture and these political topics, um, I couldn't speak on. But there is aspects of truth where you get to a point you have to speak on it. Because you can't just sit back. I think one of the worst things we can do is just be apathetic. Because why are we so lost right now? It's because we sat back and we're like, ah, oh, that's just a few crazy people. Or there's no way it's going to grab a hold of society that much. There's no way the church is going to buy into that. There's no way that athletes are going to be promoted to such a level where they're literally influencing the next generation um, to call good evil and evil good. That's where we're at right now. So but I think we're making some progress here, specifically if we're talking about sports. you got to understand your fan base. A lot of these fan bases don't, don't enjoy this at all. But if we're going to be talking about a specific narrative, there has to be another aspect of the conversation that's brought up. I know for me and plenty of other you know, athletes and media members are saying, like, enough is enough, especially people of faith. It's like, no, here's the truth. I'm not going to say that. Uh, biological men should compete in women's sports. The, the best way to love these people is to tell people like Leah Thomas, here's the truth here, and here's how we can help you as a church and as a community to make sure you're not buying into the fact that you think you're another gender. Because it's hurting Leah individually and anybody else buying into that. It's hurting the women whose opportunities are taken away. O awards are gone, and in general, the audience just doesn't, doesn't care for it. And it's all it is is polarizing. And what does it come down to? We're spreading a lie. And we're being apathetic and we're not telling people the truth. So I think we are making a way forward. It's definitely gonna be a tough, tough road here. But that's why I think for me, using the platform God's provided me, and you don't have to have a thousand, thousands of followers to make a big difference. Just have these conversations in your community, make sure you're speaking the truth and do it for the glory of God. Not for likes, not for views, none of that. Do it for God, because God has called us to preach the truth. Yes. Those are some great questions. Um, now we're going to move into, I personally think, a fun little portion. All right, here we we're go. We're going to test your knowledge, okay? I want to see how well you know basketball, football, uh, baseball. I really so, hope I don't look bad here. There hey, and if you do, I know we have a great <laughs> audience who could probably jump in and help you. So we can definitely call a friend. So be listening because here we go. We're going to do some sports yeah. Q&A for John. All right, first question. Yeah. Which city are the Broncos from? Denver. See, look, you're doing great already. It's All right. Good. What city did the Redskins play before they moved to Washington? Oh. I actually don't know. The fact that you said Redskins is a uh, pretty big deal already. I got, <laughs> I, got, I got lost in that. I can't believe you're not saying the commanders or the football team. Um, I actually don't know. Hint, hint, you're, you're here. Oh, so they, they played in Boston? Yes. Wow. All right, which team won the first Super Bowl in 1967? It was the Packers. Yes, good job. Who won the Stanley Cup in 2020 for the NHL? That was Blues. No, wait. No, it wasn't the Blues. So last year was the Avalanche, and then the year before... I heard it in the audience, yeah. I don't know who just whispered it, but you're... Tampa. Tampa, yeah, that was that was back to back. My bad. It's all right. That's why we have call for help. That was great. I still have COVID brain. <laughs> yes. Apologize, everybody. So back to back, I remember that. Congratulations, congratulations. <laughs> okay, what is the area in front of the goal in hockey called? The crease. Yeah. And what year was the NHL established? Oh my goodness, you really are asking the tough questions. Oh yeah. Hey, I wouldn't know these either. I'm not that old, people. All right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Right. Is it in the 1920s? Very close, 1917. Okay. Who was the first pitcher to strike out Babe Ruth? Wow. <laughs> that's 
<laughs> Dan's Jeez. like, let up on him already. My goodness. <laughs> it's a, I love her. It's just like, yo, where are the Broncos from? And then it's just like. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Who threw a 3-2 slider to Babe Ruth? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, do, you know, do you know the team? No, like I said, I wouldn't know these myself either. Come on. All right, anyone in the audience know who was the first pitcher to strike out Babe Ruth? <laughs> Kurt Schilling. <laughs> Jackie Mitchell. Jackie Mitchell. All right, what about this? The legend. This? Jackie Mitchell. Yep. You should be able to know this one. How many seams are on a baseball? <laughs> okay, maybe you won't know this one. Is there 52? Way, double that. 104? 108. 108. 108. Now you can tell your friends that. All right, who is the famous athlete that became part owner of the Boston Red Sox as of 2021? LeBron James. Yes. All right. Who is the current owner of the Golden State Warriors? Uh, that is. Oh my gosh! Why am I? Um, why am I going blank? Want me to give you the first name? I can. I'm. <laughs> Last name. <laughs> this makes me look. This makes me look so bad. I can see his see his face. I'm just stuck on who struck out Babe Ruth. <laughs> uh, Joe Lake. I'm sorry. Peter Goober. Did I say that right? Peter awesome. Goober and I think Joe Lake over there, co-owners. All right, all right. No. Hey, I got something wrong. All right, last question. <laughs> Who is the tallest player in NBA history? Yao Ming, right? <clears throat> it's not Yao Ming. This guy was 7'7". Seven, seven. Is that Sean Bradley? No. Anyone know? Taco Bowl. Yeah. Taco. Wait, what did you just say? Bowl. Yes. Manute Bowl. Nice job, Dad. Right. Well... I think I gave you enough of a hard time. That was great. Thank you. You hopefully, did really well. Hopefully you still think I'm a sports guy after oh, that. Oh, yeah. All right? <laughs> I'm not a total fraud. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love it. So, John, for people to still follow along, like you were saying with some of the questions, you know, thank God the Lord has given you the gifts yeah. that you have been given, and you do know sports very, very well. I Like, I've played, but I know nothing. Um, Contrary to what you might believe after that trivia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can you just tell people where they can follow along with you with Turning Point USA if they want to find more information? Yeah, so you can follow me on, uh, right now as, as we speak, I'm in Twitter jail. So Ooh. probably follow me on Instagram. Okay. Because um, I had a tweet back to the NHL. The NHL had a few things to say about the, um, the trans community. Okay. I just had to tell them men are men and women are women. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, follow me on Instagram at uh, Johnny Root underscore J-O-N-N-Y-R-O-O-T underscore i cover sports a lot especially the cultural aspect of things like mm -hmm. i said earlier there's a specific narrative get, that gets pushed and i'm going to make sure there's another aspect of the conversation that's brought up so people know the truth and we can get sports back to being unifying again because that that's my main goal there's a reason i worked in sports mm -hmm. there's a reason people love sports and if we can get back to a place where we can at least have a conversation on both sides and a, one narrative doesn't just run rampant right and we can talk about the lord we can talk about glorifying him and have an outlet for mm -hmm. that that is my main goal. So follow me there. I'm on all those platforms. Awesome. John, thanks again for taking time to be here today. You shared a lot of good information and ways we can collaborate both faith and sports. And for all of you who are joining at home, thank you so much for being here today on Anchored. I also want to take a moment to recognize all the businesses in the area that have been feeding our staff here at Catholic TV so far in these filming days. Emilio's, Donahue's, Anna's Taqueria, and Wild Willie's Burgers. They're all located in Watertown and Newton. And a huge thank you to Focus for fueling us with their energy drinks. We hope you can join us again for our next episode. God bless you all. And for our live studio audience, hang around. We've got a giveaway from Carrier Cross and a meet and greet with John Root. God bless you all. May you stay anchored in hope, and we'll see you next time. God bless. Yeah.